So today, I've got a story to tell you. But because this isn't a podcast, I had to add some video. So, I mounted my GoPro to my car and drove around the beautiful Ennis Lake in Montana. I hope you like it. When I posted my first video on April 6, 2017, I never planned to make money from it. Back then, I really didn't even know that monetizing your YouTube channel was a thing. In the beginning, my goal was to share the beauty of the Rocky Mountains and hiking trails with my friends and family back in Michigan. My first few hikes in the Boulder, Colorado area completely took my breath away. I couldn't believe how beautiful they were, and I definitely couldn't believe it didn't cost anything. Back in Michigan, a lot of the more beautiful areas are state parks, which have an entrance fee. So, in 2017, I bought myself a Sony Handycam and learned how to edit videos so I could post them onto my YouTube channel. What I quickly discovered is that I loved this creative process. After hiking six hours on Saturday and editing for a few hours on Sunday, the finished product gave me this amazing sense of accomplishment. Without trying to sound arrogant, I felt like an artist who had just completed his masterpiece. Fast forward 1,543 days later, my channel gets monetized and I start making money. On my first day of being monetized, June 27, 2021, I only made 46 cents. Since then, I've made as much as $9.31 in a single day. Overall, I've made about $800 in the last 11 months. I'm sure you're saying, $73 a month, that's it? Are you sure you want to do this full time? Let me explain my thought process. There's a website called Social Blade that ranks each YouTube channel and estimates how much money they make. I'll put some links in the description of this video so you can see what I mean. The flaw in their projections is that they give a huge range, and the data is seemingly strongly influenced by views from the most recent two weeks. In theory, this would be the best way to do things, but my channel is a bit seasonal. This is due to the fact that my downhill skiing videos are currently getting a lot more views than the rest of my videos. I'll post a link in the description of this video for the top 100 YouTube channels according to Social Blade's algorithm. Click on any one of them and you'll be completely blown away by their estimated yearly earnings. The reason for the huge range in estimation is due to a handful of reasons. Number one, you might have a million subscribers, but are any of them watching your videos? Number two, if they are watching your videos, how much of them are they watching? Number three, are they watching your ads or skipping your ads? Number four, are they clicking on your ads or not? As you can imagine, I've done a bit of research in regards to the revenue side of YouTube. A good estimation is, if a YouTube channel has a million subscribers, they're probably making about a million dollars per year. So, how hard is it to accumulate one million subscribers, you ask? As of January 2022, there are around 29,000 YouTube channels that have over 1 million subscribers. In 2019, the number of YouTube channels having more than a million subscribers grew by 65%. For me, a realistic goal is more like 100,000 subscribers. 124,000 is my goal to be exact. As of January 2022, about 306,000 YouTube channels have over 100,000 subscribers. And in 2019, the number of creators making either five or six figure income grew by 40%. Okay, now that you've got a good grasp of the basics, let's keep moving towards this dilemma I speak of. There's a great quote from The Office where Pam says, because you don't want to wake up in 50 years and look back and wonder what could have been. I've always subscribed to the idea that it's better to regret something you did do than to regret something you did not do. In our lifetime, opportunities will be created that have the capability of changing our lives. It's up to us to either pursue that opportunity or not. YouTube was created in my lifetime, launched February 14, 2005, 
and I know I'd regret not pursuing this seemingly amazing opportunity. It provides me with a financial opportunity that knows no bounds, and it gives me a reason to explore. The exploration part is actually really important to me. The Psychology Today magazine says the happiest people in the world are curious, adventurous explorers. Not only that, but my completed videos bring me such an amazing sense of accomplishment. With all that being said, here's my dilemma. Do I create videos that come naturally to me, like downhill skiing, camper conversions, camping, hiking, and travel vlogs? Or do I create videos simply to get views and try to make as much money as possible with silly antics that have titles like, you won't believe what happens next. I met a guy recently who said he has a Bigfoot costume. He thought we could create some type of spoof using his costume to make people believe I actually saw Bigfoot. A few days later, a friend calls me up and says, you should buy a hedgehog and add him to your videos. That's the kind of stuff people want to watch after a long day at work. In my opinion, if I decided to evolve my channel into something like that, will it take all the fun out of it? At that point, does it just become about the money? It seems to me that's a recipe for disaster. Taking a hobby that I love, exploring and creating videos, and making it more like work. I relate it to someone who loves photography, so they start up a wedding photography business. Before you know it, the stress of it all completely ruins their love for photography. Or someone who loves to paint, so they open an art gallery in a small town in Georgia. The financial stress and time commitment related to running it as a business has now taken all of the fun out of painting. Or someone who loves to play golf, so they go pro. Now each putt is worth so much money that they simply cannot enjoy their time on the golf course anymore. I kind of thought getting a dog would be a distinguishing feature that would help my channel rise to the top. But for whatever reason, you'll see in an upcoming video, that scenario didn't quite work out. I can only assume it wasn't meant to be. So I'll just keep moving forward. The reason I create nature related videos is because that's what I enjoy watching. I love to watch shows like Alone, Mountain Men, and Yukon Men. The beautiful scenery allows my brain to relax and unwind. I find them to be both relaxing and motivational. In stark contrast, have you ever watched CBS News in the morning? They do something called the eye opener. I'll post a link in the description if you want to see what I mean. I hate everything about it. It's 90 seconds of complete chaos. Each video clip lasts like half a second with flashing and noise and nonsense. It's so ridiculous. I actually feel like it's toxic to my brain. Right now, I love what I'm doing and I'm doing what I love. I've tried working a nine to five job and I literally lose the will to live. In contrast, when I have a video that's almost complete, I'll wake up at 5.30 in the morning totally excited for the day. All I can do is have faith that God or the universe has a plan for me. Until next time, thanks for listening. Have a great week.